Hi folks, we are joined now by Mike Green from Dreadnought Studios, Chris McCauley and of course the indomitable Decker Stoker from Stoker and McCauley. And the reason we're all together is to try and get some insight from these secret holders about a new project that they're teaming up to work on. Now Mike, you are Dreadnought Studios, uh, you have quite the pedigree it seems, uh, digital games, marketing, advertising, doing design projects, little graphics for celebrity A-listers uh, and a number of games, Life of Rome which is uh, quite the eye-opener. Uh, I hadn't come across it before and once I did I now regret not knowing about it sooner. Um, <laughs> where did Dreadnought Studios come from then? Well I started my um, career in the games industry probably um, 1990s or mid 90s, so yeah, worked out for quite a few games, a few studios, and decided that uh, I should set up uh, my own company. Um, well, it was in the year 2013, so not that long ago, uh, really, but it's um, yeah, gone from strength to strength, and uh, we've got a lot of um, you know, as you mentioned, uh, games and other projects on the go, so we're kind of um, we're just uh, you know, moving on from one thing to the other. And I think the, the main thing that we're trying to do is just to keep pushing the boundaries and, you know, when we think VR, that's where it's at, really. So that's what we're, you know, going for, big, big style. Lovely. What is it then, Mike, about the, the Stokerverse that, that caught your attention? I can't imagine that Chris dragged you down a back alley and threatened you into doing this. There must be some sort of passionate interest here. So what, what was it caught your eye? Um, well, so obviously it's a very... Um, important and uh, well-established um, theme but you know to be part of it it's just fantastic we're um, you know going to probably uh, you know have lots of conversations and you know do lots of concepts and it's it's going to be really exciting so i'm looking forward to it very much excellent stuff and is there i mean is it too early a stage to try and prize out of you what you envisage mm -hmm. the finished article looking like or what sort of direction you're going to take with the concept or are you sworn to secrecy on that? I think I'm going to have to pass to Chris on that one. <laughs> um, I mean, i am obviously got my own ideas, but it's uh, it'll definitely be a collaboration. Uh, that's all I can say over that. Okay, that, that's fair enough. Decker, we, we have to ask yourself, I mean, this, this is a technological... Uh, Marvel in itself VR I've dabbled with it and, and still find it quite sort of bizarre that such a thing even exists but for the legacy of Bram it's first step into virtual reality what what does that mean to yourself? Well Andy you, you know I've, I've been sort of involved in, in sort of promoting Bram's legacy for about 15 years now understanding it and promoting it and, and the thing I've realized is that Bram was Quite a, a techno geek himself. If he was alive today, he would have been sitting there with Mike trying to figure out how to do VR, you know, for the Lyceum Theater. Um, you know, but in all seriousness, you know, his book has transcended onto stage, onto screen, big screen, little screen, streaming, lots of lots lots of different ways that Dracula's inspired a number of people in the world of entertainment. And this, uh, because Chris McCauley said, Dacre, we've we've got to try something like this. We've got to look into VR. Um, and, and then when he obviously introduced us to Mike, it was like a perfect fit. But I really, I think this is very appropriate to, you know, that Bram would have approved it. It was something that he was interested in. Modern technology at his time, you know, was, you know, as, as, was, was, was electric lighting in the Lyceum. And, and, and the swords that were, you know, hitting each other in Faust, that creating blue flames, that was high tech. Well, this is the next step in you know 2021 the 124th anniversary of dracula you know to announce that in the next year or so we're going to be working with mike and dreadnought with chris's expertise we're going to bring the most cutting edge uh, versions of dracula visits to places where um you know where dracula you know was was formed inspirations dracula's castle some of these cool things that we're going to be able to bring to you in the most up-to-date technology that exists lovely it, it is it's fascinating to think and and Mike probably knows this better than anybody. As as the mere layman in this, I find the VR experience almost overwhelming. 
because you know people can potentially sort of be stood in Bram's shoes, so to speak, seeing the things that he's seen, the things that inspired him, or indeed sort of immersing themselves in that story. Which brings us quite naturally to Chris and and the stories which can send chills down the spine. I mean, Chris, your writing doesn't hold anything back. Are you are you going to temper the steel with VR so you don't give people heart attacks? <laughs> Uh, no, it's a simple answer on that. No, uh, this will be a uh, thrilling journey through uh, the the Dracula novel with some surprises for fans. Uh, I think VR is the, the perfect uh, vehicle to really scare the shit out of people. And I think that's what the fans want. I think they want an authentic thrill ride where they do feel that they're part of the novel and that they watch. It's a familiar story, but we're through this project, we're injecting uh, some aspects of Dracula that were originally going to be published uh, that haven't been seen before in this format. So we're injecting that into the storyline. And we're also putting a few twists on it. So it's, it's, the, it's the familiar story that people play through, but just not in the manner that they might expect. Uh, it, we have this just being an episodic, uh, piece as well. So various episodes you get to play through the uh, the novel as, as alternative characters and then it all comes together as a, a beautiful whole uh, and you have a, a wonderful interactive um, game experience in, in the authentic Dracula novel. Mike, for the benefit of people who don't kind of get it, I mean I'm, I'm familiar with obviously console games, computer games, people writing code and things happening on the screen, sprites and all that, the old type day stuff. How, how much... Yeah, how, well, I was, uh, my name is actually in the credits for Commodore 64 games. That kind of shows you where I entered the computer world and left it. Um, okay. <laughs> how different is creating a virtual experience from, like, you know, stick a disc in and play it on your, your TV? Game. Right. Well, so the first the first thing you do is when you put on the headset, um, it just immediately you notice the difference. You just transport it to that world wherever it is, and that experience just completely envelops you and all your senses. And you just um, you know some people find it really difficult to sort of break away from that. That's how immersive it is. And obviously, it depends on the quality of the graphics or the theme or what they're into. But um, you know. With this, it, the, the theme is just perfect for, you know, the whole horror concept and, uh, you know, the, the jump scares and, you know, the things we could do, you know, I'm just, you know, can't wait to get stuck in, basically. It's going to be a fantastic um, process, just creating it and coming up with all the ideas and, uh, you know, obviously sticking to the story, but, you know, trying to, you know, get some twists in it and, you know, trying to do something unexpected. Um and, you know, with the graphics, that's where we're really going to, you know, get our, um, the, the biggest uh, thing that we can bring to the table is, you know, make it look as real or as graphic. And, you know, that's what's really going to be the key thing to transport the player or the user into that world, um, how well we do our job in that sense. So, um, yeah, that's something we're really looking forward to doing. Well, if, if the previous jobs that you've done to date or anything going by from what I've been able to see on screen, you definitely mm -hmm. uh, will be able to deliver on this. But, I mean, yeah. again, this, this, is, this is an idiot asking the question. Surely this mm -hmm. is a monumental task. Building a 3D world, it, you know, I, I know the difficulty of building a, a flat gaming world or even one mm -hmm. sort of, you know, the, the first-person shooter thing. Is it as massive or bigger a task to do this, you know, because literally you're looking around and, and you're seeing everything. I mean, just how do you do it? What, you know, show us your magic wand and, and how you make that happen. <laughs> I'm not going to give too much away. No, it's, it's basically, this has always been the case with making games. You have to, um, you, you're, you're limited by the, the processor or the, the memory or whatever technical uh, limitations there are. So that's the first thing. So you have to adhere to that. And then, um, it's about being creative and uh, using, like, especially something like this theme. It can be a lot of darkness, and that's always been a, a sort of a key weapon in the arsenal of a uh, lot of artists and game developers. Uh, you know, limit to what they can see, small spaces. So, um, yeah, it all depends on time limitations and budgets and 
all that. Uh, but we we obviously don't want to you know take away from the story and or the experience. So we try and pack as much as we can into um, whatever environment it is or whatever we're creating. And you know we we want to focus on the really core cool graphics that you know got to be in front of you and you know try not to worry about anything that's too far away. I say using darkness is always going to be a good thing for that. And reusing assets as well. So, um, you know, if there's no woods, there's obviously going to be a lot of the tr trees and scenery, and we can close it in so you're in on on rails, as they call it. So you don't have to, you know, um, you know, it's not going to be like a free roaming game where you can just walk off into the sunset and, you know, that kind of thing. So we're going to have that um, really intense, I think. You know, that's how I envision in a way, just having that a very sort of a visceral thing where you're going to be so close to the action at all times. and you're going to get the most out of it from that uh, perspective. Brilliant, brilliant. I, I, I can't, personally, you know, all all loyalties aside, I can't wait because the idea of virtual reality in in I know it's an entertainment source, but to be able to see that potentially as well developed as as an educational as asset too, and the mm -hmm. scope of the Stokerverse, the scope of Bram's work, it's it's just. It's just fantastic, and it's great to be able to, to break that, that news to people today. I realise you gentlemen are not going to be a minefield of inside secrets on this, so I'm not going to push you any further on, on the topic. Um, I will probably try over some sort of digital beer to prize more secrets out of Chris at some point, and, and Mike's made the mistake of leaving me his email address, so periodically I might fire him a message and see if I can toy more information out of him to release to the, the, the Stoker and Macaulay page as well. Gentlemen, <laughs> it's fantastic on World Dracula Day to be able to share this with people. Mike, it's been lovely getting to, to chat to yourself. I know, uh, looking at your work, that the project and the legacy of Bram is in safe hands. If it's not, Decker's very quick to say so, and he'll keep you the straight and narrow <laughs> as well. But with Chris's writing too, I can only imagine that this is potentially going to be the most terrifying thing that I'm going to have to play now in due course. Right, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Unless there's any questions, I'll draw this meeting to a close. Not for me. Thanks, Andy. I appreciate it. And don't forget to bring the garlic along either, Mike, when you do this. I know you're going to need that garlic. You told me this is going to be very realistic. A garlic <laughs> and a little, a little steak in hand would be useful. Yeah, it'd be so realistic in smelling our yes. Exactly well, exactly. Mike, we tip for you. If Chris, if Chris ever gets in your back, post him some garlic, and you'll suddenly find you get about two weeks peace and quiet from him. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> okay, folks, thanks very much for tuning in for this bulletin. Important news, exciting news. Tell your friends, share with all your friends, and do make sure you nip over and check out Dreadnought site as well. Take a look at some of the work they've already done, and that will whet your appetite and sharpen your teeth for what is duly going to come in course from this project as well. Until the next time, thanks for watching and happy Dracula Day. Goodbye.